Welcome to Piggy Power. And today, we go from this to this. Mmm, bigger and better. See these brakes? See these brakes here? They're not too bad. They're a little bit over-adjusted, a bit sticky, but they're not too bad. They're 247 mil across. They're non-vented, um, decent enough caliper on the back. Does handbrake and the foot brake, so that's nice. Known for not having the greatest handbrake, but you know, handbrake isn't on now. And what it is, I can do handbrake turns in these with big wheels, so. If you adjust it right, good cables, they're fine. But I am going to change these for a 266mm vented setup. Why are we going to do that? Well, obviously, because bigger is better, right? Now, we're going to get this disc, which is a bit scabby. I'm going to clean it up in a minute and just show you. So, obviously, this is a solid disc, which is fine in its own way. It's on the back of the 306. They're not very heavy on the back end. If you lighten the back end with rust uh, or you know plexiglass and take the back of it out really light however these are vented so better and um, now i have been overheating these they are a nice tinge of black right now and they're not very old at all there's there's zero lip they've done maybe 500 miles but all that 500 miles is hard work for these rear brakes because i'm i'm doing a lot of on the road tuning and fettling with different things and so we're accelerating hard, braking hard, accelerating hard, braking hard, and these turn all sorts of colours of the rainbow, while the fronts are barely warm. We're also planning for the NC500. This is the Lemon. I think it's going to be part of the series of the Lemon. And you're going to pack the boot full of loads of stuff for the NC500, and going to be driving quite, quite enjoyably. You know, NC500, nice tour. So you're going to be driving hard, and you're going to have a boot full of camp, you know, cameras and camping gear and toilet, maybe, and a tent and some food and all the other stuff. So I'm going to upgrade the rear brakes. Uh, this would also be good if you had an estate and you were towing loads or yeah, you had a family of five and you always had the boot full of stuff. The rear brakes do get really hot. Uh, they do get used despite what people say, quite a lot. Uh, with the phase three with the ABS system, it puts quite a lot of braking on the back. So these are bigger to start with, so that's nice. And they're also, as you can see, they're vented, quite nicely vented. These are not. Now the key to these, conversion, uh, there's two little keys to this conversion, really, which I'm getting now. Ooh, bits of metal chinking. One key is this, which is a wider pad carrier. This is a narrow pad carrier, and the narrow carrier doesn't allow for the bigger uh, disc and the bigger pads. Now the other problem is obviously that the, the pad carrier and the caliper need to sit out slightly further, so here's the other little key to it. Now, if you're interested, I am making kits that will just bolt on, basically. You'll get a pad carrier, a couple of bolts, a couple of these, a couple of discs, and a set of pads. All as one kit that you'll just unbolt, as I'm about to show you, and bolt back on. Winning. There's a couple of modifications needed. If you're running a back plate like this, you just need to trim it a little bit because this hangs down lower. So I'll show you, show you doing that uh, in a little while. Um, yeah, that's it really. If you're not running one of these dust covers, I found these not rusted, which was amazing, and I've cleaned them up a little bit. They need a bit of a clean up again, but most people have got rid of them by now and then. That will just bolt straight on. No modifications needed at all. You just bend the, uh, allow the cable just to run along a bit, bend the cable a little, the, the pipe a little bit because it's kinked, and you just straighten it out a little bit, and original caliper, brilliant. Right, I've chatted enough. Let's get on and we'll strip this down. Uh, pretty easy to do that, and um, go from there. So we'll just remove the old pad caliper carrier. You can do that straight off this. Oh, got my sockets up. Um, 17 mils, 17 millimeter. They are tight by the way, so that's fine. Uh, 
Oh, let's turn that up a bit. Um, it's always I find the easiest way to often pack disc changes as well. So that's cool. All right, and then we can just, that comes off as one, job done. We're already halfway there to remove everything. And then, don't do that. You should really do this. Oh, good, that broke. That's fine. You can use your, you can use these, these disc retaining bolts. Um, can't use that one. But if they don't snap off, you can use them on the new discs, so that's fine. Uh, and then there's two 19 mil on the back, which I'm hoping I can use the big gum for, because I can cheat. I can, but it's all just gets in the way a little bit, that's fine. You probably couldn't do that with a standard exhaust box, which I don't have, which also needs sorting the NC500, because Oh my life, the drone at 70 miles an hour. Okay, and then these bolt on like that and allow it to drop down. So we're gonna have to trim this bit here and then that will bolt on, sort of. We've got our bracket here and this bush bolts in place with the two bolts provided. We bolt that where the caliper used to be bolted on, basically. Oh, I'm just smash my knuckles at the same time. Sorry, that slipped out my hand. There we go. I'm just gonna, I've gotta use a couple of lock washers on that, because I felt that would be important. Or you could put Loctite on it. Okay, and then you're gonna see the issue that once we've got this caliper in place, that the carrier has issues. Um, but what we're gonna do is just back here is where the brake handbrake cable is pinched in by the carrier bracket thingy that attaches to the beam. So what you gotta just do is just release it, open up the ears on that cable, make it free, and we can slide some of the caliper back a little bit and just release some of the brake line as well. And then just bolt that caliper onto the bracket. We just need a bit more handbrake cable pulled through. And that will line up like a treat, or like a boss. There we go. Whack them back on, nice and tight to spec. <clears throat> you could use some something on the threads as well. I recommend as a professional you use Loctite on those threads. Sure. Um, and then you're going to see, oh wait, if I've got a brake disc cover heat protector thingy, this doesn't fit. You'd be right. So I'm going to go and cut that off. Should we deal with any of the sharper edges? There we go. And then a caliper carrier. Oh yes, it fits just lovely. So next step is to fit the disc. And as you can see, the hub is a bit rubbish. So you do this with any brake disc fitting thing. You get a wire wheel. There we go, and then we'll get the disc on there. We'll use this one. Don't know what it's from, but it fits. They're basically M6 bolts, so they've just got the fluted or chamfered or whatever edge you call it to sit in the disc. And here comes 
Here comes the rain. Do do do. -do. Now that discs are machined to fit, supposedly, and they are machine fit, it must be set, which is quite a tight fit. I'm going to get that screw on there, and then hopefully we can tap it home. The other one, I've already done the other side, which obviously you can't see, but it did fit all right. And the disc did fit a little bit easier than this side, admittedly. It is just machine fit, that's all. Cool. Nothing like a hammer. Nice! Yeah, so these discs don't just fit straight on, they are machine fit. Now the next thing to check is your heat shield, make sure it's not rubbing, which mine was just rubbing a little bit. No, it's not. Very nice. Sweet Caroline. Ba, ba, ba. Anyway, um, once you put your wheel or your spacer or whatever you're using, that wheel will flatten that out nicely. Bolt that disc up. Sweet. So all we need to do now is find the bolts that we removed earlier, add some thread lock, and fit the caraper carrier. Oh, something to bear in mind, which I didn't just do. You need to wind your car caliper back in. Stupid boy! Okay, cut scene, come back in a second. So you will just need to just wind the caliper in using a caliper windy tool thing. Uh, just push hard and rotate clockwise and it'll work its way. It's gonna hurt to put a little bit of oil or grease just behind the boot, which I've just done. As you're doing this, so let's get back to doing. I tell you what, I'm going to check. I'd like to see whether it's possible to fit the disc. So, if you ever need to change discs and pads, can we do it with caliper, caliper carrier in place? Ah, oh, yes, we can. That's a win. So let's do that. Let's show how we did that. Nope, that's the wrong way. The other way would work a lot better. By the way, if you'd like to order this kit off me, it will not come with painted carriers. It'll come just with car carriers that will be clean, ready to paint your choice. I mean, I could paint them orange if you really want them orange. Let me know. I'll paint them orange for you, not a problem. If you're weird like me and like orange, like McLaren, like oranges and nectarines. Right, pull the caliper all the way towards you, and we'll fit the disc. Nice. A little screwy, 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 screwy. And wind that sucker in. Slight adjustment with the Tanya Harding might be required. Sweet. So it's already looking much cooler because you know, bigger is better, isn't it? Bigger is better. Right. What we've got to do is just fit the pads. Now I do have a rear brake fitting pad guide thing, um, which is what I'm about to do. But basically, just put the pads in, make sure you put the clip, clip, blip, 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 and done. I'll go get them and I'll show you how to do it. Here we go, set of pads, nice and thick. These are padgids. Um, I think the other kit I'm supplying them with have got some com lines or something. Um, they're slightly thicker pads, which means they will also last a heck of a lot longer. The new pads on the original rear brakes of these are like half the thickness of that. Um, pros and cons? Don't know yet. Soon find out. So I'm just going to put a little dab, dab dab, of uh, grease in some suitable locations on the ears of the pads and on the backs of the pads where both the caliper carrier will be rubbing and that would be going 
generally I kind of hold themselves in usually, but apparently this set don't want to do that. That's fine. We have some springs here somewhere. There they are. So these springs are absolutely critical. Never leave them off, no matter how difficult you find it is to fit them. Okay, just always, always fit those springs. See that way around? See, and it springs and holds it in. And then you get your little slidey bar. And that goes in like that, holds the first pad in. See, can't come out. Never coming out that. And people that say, oh yeah, these are rubbish, these setups. The springs always pop out and the sliders always pop out. Rubbish. If you fitted it wrong, then they will pop out, yes. If you fit them correctly, guess what happens? They don't fall out. Weird that. Like, why would a manufacturer design a brake setup where it would fall out? Seriously. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Sometimes a little tricky. Little needle tappy. It's hard, like, holding all in at the same position. But you'll get there. You'll get there. Come on. You know you want to. You know you want to. Nope, 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 nope. They are, they are really tricky, and I'm sorry if my head's in the way for half of this, but they are not the easiest to try and do. I can assure you. But once in, brilliant. It'll be fine. There we go. My head might have been in the way then, but screwdriver on the top here, on the caliper, lift it up, position it, tap the slider in, till it won't go any further, which it won't, because there's a bolt there. That's my phone going off. The all important bit that people forget about, just enjoy that musical undertone, is this little clip here. See this? That must go in, in the little hill at the back. And I'll tell you what, if you don't put it in, your slider might just fall out then. So my head's in the way again, try and just go oop and over. So give it a squeeze, wiggle it in. Now once that is in that hole, Ah, there's nothing stopping me putting it in that hole. Come on, baby. It's just a bit tight. Come on, wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah. Try and use the proper thing. It's probably beneficial for your brakes. I, I, I'll come back. They're tricky. I'm going to have to get my head in the way, like this, and you won't be able to see anything. All right, I'll give you a close-up now. My other video guy does just show this as well, but you can see that little clip. It goes through the hole. Not one bit above and below, but through the hole. And it will be difficult to get in, That's so it's difficult to get out. It won't rattle out if it's tight, so don't make it looser or tighter. And that stops the slider moving forwards and back, which stops the springs flicking out, which stops your pads falling out, which stops you dying. So, only I would say only attack this little procedure. If you've watched this at least 50 times, click like, click subscribe, you know, share it with all your friends and you're competent enough to do your brakes. That's all I'd say right now. So there we go. Vented, 266 mil brakes, bolt-on modification. Give me a shout, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, if you'd like the little kit, and if you'd like to do this yourself. Dead easy, probably takes about an hour to an hour and a half to do both sides, and it just bolts on. Bolt-on modifications. It's the dream. So I should just finally say thanks for watching Piggy Power and if you would like a little bit of help with upgrading your rear brakes, now this will also apply to some 205s, 305s, I think some 405s, uh, a bunch of other Citroëns like Citroën Saxos, Citroën ZX maybe, Citroën Zara, maybe even the Picassos, not really sure if they've got the same brake setup. Uh, it'll also apply to the 106 and the 206, uh, 306, not the 406. So yeah, a lot of a lot of vehicles this will apply to to get some better rear brakes for the win. Okay, there may well be a Mark II of this bracket, but this set is kind of the, being to be the first prototypes we'll show out. Um, I'm using them. I'm going to test them for a bit before I put this video out and before I make them available as a little kit. Um, they're not going to be dirt cheap, obviously. It's not going to be like 
20 quid because you're going to get new discs, new pads, bracket, new brackets and a little custom bracket that's obviously bolts on and a pair of bolts and all the hardware that you'll need. So yeah, w whatever. It's going to be what it is, but if you would like it and you're interested, send me us a message. Facebook, Instagram, bloop bloop, say hello. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing. Bye.